Hi everyone, welcome to this third grass system video. In the first video I introduced my grass painting tool, which at the time used a geometry shader. And in the second video I talked about converting it to a compute shader and adding more improvements. And now I'm back with a new version with even more features and improvements. So what's new in this version? The tool is no longer a mono behavior, but an editor window with new settings. The most requested feature from the previous video was generating grass on terrain and objects automatically, so that's possible now too. And there's options to block grass on certain terrain layers or vertex colors. I added chunk culling, so only the grass that's in camera view gets rendered. The performance is also better. Here's a test scene with almost 1.4 million grass blades running well on the Steam Deck. Here's a quick overview of all the features. In Paint Edit mode, you can use a brush to paint new grass, remove grass, edit the length and width and the colors, and reproject positions after making changes to the floor. In Flood mode, you can set the color and length width for all of the grass at once. Generate lets you select terrains and meshes to generate grass points on based on this density slider. Here you can also set it to fade the height of the grass with vertex colors and terrain layers, or block the generation completely on specific vertex colors and terrain layers. There's also a collision check layer mask, so no grass gets placed on the rocks, for example. The general settings holds the min-max allowed length and width, random height offsets, the blade shape settings, Allowed segments and blades per point placed. Wind, tinting, culling settings, and finally interaction strength and shadows option. These settings are all saved in the grass settings scriptable object, which is used by the grass compute script. Additionally, there is also blending with terrain textures and interactivity. Okay, so how does all this work? By painting or generating, the graph system will add data to a list. This data is a custom struct called grass data and holds four entries. The position of the grass, the normal of the floor or object the point is at, the length or width of the grass from the editor window, the color of the grass from the editor window, and this grass data list is then sent over to the compute shader in a buffer which will use this data and additional settings to create the triangles for the grass. Here's a simplified example showing how a blade of grass gets made out of triangles. Say we want to make a grass blade with three segments. We need to place a bunch of points and draw triangles using those points. So we start by placing one vertex, vertex zero. Then we take the width of the grass we want and use that offset to place our second vertex, vertex one. Now we need to go up by the total height we want, divided by the segments we have, and there we can place the third vertex, vertex 2. Now repeat the process by offsetting the width and segment height, and for the last segment, to create the tapered end, we only place one vertex. Same segment height, but only half the width offset, so it ends up in the middle. This has created seven vertices, zero to six. Now we just need to use these vertices to make triangles. A quick connect the dots shows that we need five triangles here. A triangle needs three points, so for the first one it's easy, just zero, one, and two. But we want to do this automatically in a loop. For that, loop over the amount of triangles we need to make, five in our case, and every time grab the current index we are on, plus the next two points. So for the first loop we get 0, 0 plus 1, and 0 plus 2. And these points make up our triangle. And for the next loop we do 1, 1 plus 1, and 1 plus 2. So our second triangle is on 1, 2, and 3. And now just do this three more times and we have a blade of grass. If we do the same thing but add a few more settings, like a curve, smaller bottom width, more segments, we get something like this. 
then with a radius offset and more blades, you get a nice little clump of grass. Finally, with even more settings like color, random offsets and wind, you get this nice stylized grass look. All the geometry info for the grass is created by the compute shader, but this doesn't actually render it, it just sends it to a buffer. This buffer is read by this custom node in the shader graph, which turns it into visible triangles. The chunk culling works by creating a giant bound around all of the grass, splitting this up into smaller bounds and assigning the ID of a grass point to these child bounds. The system then checks if the camera view overlaps with any of these bounds and returns the grass IDs inside of it to a list, which is sent to the compute shader. The compute shader will then only process a grass point if it's in this list. The terrain blending is done by taking a snapshot of the meshes and terrain you want to blend with. This snapshot is made by a camera with an orthographic top-down view that will only look at specific layers. The final shader will take this snapshot texture and blend the bottom of the grass with it if blending is enabled. Interactivity takes world positions of objects with the shader interactor component and compares it to the grass vertex positions. Using distance calculations, it then bends the grass based on the radius specified in the components. There are pre-made packages available for my Bright Giant Star patrons, but all the files are public, so let's go over how to set it up. Go to the link in the description, scroll down to the bottom and grab all the C-sharp files and the compute shader. Then for shaders, grab the one that is right for your render pipeline. For built-in, this is the grass surface shader. For URP, it's both the shader graph and the HLSL file. Import all of these files into your project. You'll need to move the grass painter window script to your assets editor folder, or make one if you don't have it yet. Otherwise, you cannot make a build. This editor specific code will get stripped out when it's in this folder. The grass window tool will try to save settings in the settings folder. If you don't have this one yet, create it before opening the tool window, or you will get errors. You can also change it to a different folder if you go to the init function in the grass painter window script and change these lines. You can now open the grass tool window from tools grass tool. Click the button to create a new grass system object. It will tell you you have to create a grass settings file from utility grass settings. In this grass settings file, add the compute shader and make a grass material. If the shader graph gives you errors, you will need to open up the graph and set the grass HLSL file in the two custom nodes. Now create a material out of this shader and assign it in the grass settings file. You can now paint and generate grass. To get the blending to work, create an empty game object and a child camera. Set the camera to orthographic and 90 X rotation so it looks down. Add the render terrain map script to the empty parent. Drag the meshes and terrains you want to blend with into the slots. And disable enable the component. If you now turn on blending in the grass material, it should blend with the floor. For interactivity, you just need to add a shader interactor component to your interactive objects. Hit manual update in the grass tool window and it should work right away. Some things to note, 
If you're editing the grass material, you need to hit manual update to actually see the differences, unless you turn on auto update in the grass compute script. But auto update can get very slow because it keeps recreating all the data, just keep that in mind. If you're seeing flickering or stretch vertices, there is just too much grass on screen at once. Reduce the number of total grass or the max blades per point. And finally, the grass is set up so you can easily add additional buffers using the grass IDs. For example, to cut grass or burn it. If there's interest in a guide on this, let me know in the comments. So there we have it, the newest version of my grass system. I hope you find it useful. If you want more resources and tutorials, they're on my GitHub page, linked in the description. A big thank you to my patrons for supporting my tutorial making. Thanks for watching and see you next time.